So right now it's like 10.30, I think. I think it's about 10.30. And I've just stopped at one of my favorite woods. But yeah, I just thought um, today would be a good opportunity to share or to show because a lot of people have asked me questions about this. There have been a lot of questions about my gear. This is my camping bag. So, I've literally only just thought of doing this. So, genuinely, I've not pre-prepared anything for this video. This is the bag I use day to day. You know, this is everything I need in it to sleep and make a fire, basically. If I want to cook any dinner and bring pots and stuff like that, that's normally extra. I bring that as spare. But, um, yeah, basically just wanted to show you, like, what's in this bag. So, let's do it. So another thing a lot of people ask me about is my boots. My boots are made by Scarpa, I think, and they're like Scarpa, Gore-Tex, something or other. Maybe it's worth saying before all this that I'm not sponsored by anyone, so all my opinions and reviews and stuff like that are going to be completely like impartial and honest. So, uh, but yeah, these are Gore-Tex Scarpa boots and they're really waterproof. My feet have never got wet. They're really, really good. And I do not look after them. I am really bad. I think because I use them every day, it's difficult to find an opportunity to clean them. So yeah, I use them a lot and, the, and they've taken a bit of a beating, but yeah, they're really, really good. And I'll try and find like which exact boots they are and I'll link them. In fact, I'll link all the, I'll link all the gear in the description for those who are interested. So yeah, that's my boots. And then, uh, yeah, my bag. Let's get it out. Yeah. This is a Berghouse 24 7 30 litre bag. Very, very small, very, very simple. There's probably a million better bags out there, but this is just brilliant. And one of my favorite things about it is it just doesn't look like a big deal. You know, I really like that. And uh, yeah, it's got these two side pockets, which I rarely use, but I do have something. I've got some extra strong mints, a piece of spare birch bark, and a plastic bag. <laughs> it's going well so far. That better. I feel like there's a shadow on my bag before. All right, yeah, so before I kind of open up the actual bag, I just want to show you what's in this front pocket. It's not the most accessible front pocket, and again, like, you'll probably think, you know, it'd be much better if you had, like, one of those pockets on the front, but fine, suits me well. First thing I have in here is my Swissami knife. These knives are just brilliant. I am half Swiss, so maybe I'm a little bit biased, but, like, I use and abuse these knives, and they stay sharp. I mean, I do sharpen them as well. They stay sharp, and they're just great. And this one has like a good sized blade. This one's got a lock on it, so it doesn't it doesn't fall back in. So uh, it's a bit safer than a knife that just like flips out. Yeah, so it's got a big knife on it, and then it's got just got all the normal stuff. The two most useful things is the knife and the saw, which actually got wood on it right now. But this saw, it's just great. It's so useful to have. Again, I have a bigger saw which I use, but if I don't want to bring my big saw out to the forest with me. Having this little one is just super useful for just cutting off little branches or... I've actually cut quite big branches with this before and it's and it's surprisingly good. So yeah, that is my Swiss Army knife, my main knife, my favorite knife, I think. And then I have my fire steel, which is looking a bit worse for wear. But this is uh, what I use to start fires with. And you might think, well, why do you do that? Because surely that's really difficult. But I've got really used to making fires like this. I wouldn't say it's easier than using matches or a lighter, but if this gets wet, I can still use it and it doesn't run out of fuel as quickly as a lighter. And also I think for me, I really, I really enjoy the daily practice of, of learning you know, how to make a fire just from a spark. Yeah, it's just a tool I really, really enjoy using. Just very, very simple. Just fits in my pocket. Just no nonsense, really. And then I have mirror fold out mirror. If you're out in the forest a lot, having a mirror is actually really, really useful. I remember once I like, it was pitch dark and I walked straight into a branch which just like went into my eye. And uh, you know, I had this and I managed to sort of see if, if I'd like caused any like proper damage. But saying all that, I actually rarely ever use it. But I wouldn't get rid of it because it's a really useful bit of kit to have because when I have needed it, I've been really thankful for it. Right, next. All right, this is great. This is a Falk Niven DC4 sharpening stone. And it's got a diamond side and a ceramic side. And basically this is what I use to sharpen all my knives. It's actually much safer to have a sharper knife because you have to, you know, you use less pressure and you have much more control. And so, uh, yeah, 
having that on me is just really useful because if I'm waiting for my water to boil or something like that, or if I've got a spare moment, I can just sharp, you know, sharpen my knives and stuff like that. Then, in here, I've got my tick tweezers. They're just really, they're basically just really pointy tweezers, which if I ever get ticks, yeah, the tweezers just allow you to grab it by the head and just pluck it straight out. It's gross, but necessary. All right, this is one of my most used pieces of kit. So I used to use like sporks, but I found, well, all the sporks I had were made of plastic. And so they always used to snap. And then also I found I never used like the fork end of the spork. Everything I ever cook outside, a spoon is really useful. A fork, not very useful. If I need to cut something, I've got my knife. Uh, knife and a spoon, that's all you need. And this one's just great. It's just like really simple. I don't know, is it titanium or aluminium or something? I don't know, but it's metal and it just folds up and you just literally uh, fold it out and then clip it in. It's just a really straightforward, good spoon. Next up, uh, there's probably just loads of junk in here now. So that's just like spare birch bark. It's just really useful to know that in my bag somewhere, there'll probably be a bit of birch bark, so. And then uh, the last thing is this, it's my seasoning. And that's all the, like the extra little things that I keep in my front pocket. So I'm gonna show you what's in here now. So my main bag. At the top, it's the last thing I pack away and therefore the first thing I get out is my tarp. This one is a three meter by three meter square tarp made by DD Hammocks. And in here I have uh, a bundle of paracord, which is my ridge line. And then it's basically just like a big piece of waterproof fabric which just acts as my canopy to keep me, keep me dry and warm. And also, uh, even when it doesn't rain, it shelters you obviously from falling leaves and, you know, birds that poo on you and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, tarp's great. And obviously if it's pouring with rain, first thing I'll do is just open up my bag, get the tarp out, set it up, get underneath it. And then, you know, I've got shelter and so I can set up everything else just really nice and slowly. Right, next thing is my actual hammock itself, also made by DD Hammocks. It's great, it's just the normal camping hammock. They do all sorts of other ones with like built-in mosquito nets and like various other things, but for me, I just love the simplicity of this. This is literally just two ropes and a piece of fabric, and that's it. I honestly, I haven't actually tried any other brands of hammock. Um, this is what I'm used to, and they're great. I will say that the first, so I bought my hammock like just a couple of months before I started wild camping every night. After two years, it was actually, it wasn't the rope that wore out. It was actually the, the fabric of the hammock itself. It wore completely out and like, and ripped. Thankfully it was in the morning and so I wasn't absolutely stuffed. But um, yeah, if you use it every night, then it will probably break after two years. So yeah, my hammock. And then, have also made by DD Hammocks is my under blanket and this bag is completely knackered. I need to get it fixed. But yeah, the under blanket basically, it's like a second hammock that's made out of sleeping bag material and it hangs underneath my hammock. It kind of hugs the hammock from underneath and it's super, super useful for keeping you warm in the winter. If it wasn't for this thing, I'd, I don't think I'd be able to do what I do because it would just be a bit too cold or I'd have to have like loads and loads of layers. I have two of these, but I find after less than a year, these things start breaking. The elastic kind of expires pretty quickly and it's, it seems like it's really difficult to replace. And so I've actually just recently bought one by Snugpack. I've used it once and it seems amazing. It seems really, really good. It actually seems a lot better than this one, to be honest. Right, next is my sleeping bag. This is my winter sleeping bag. It is made by Alpkit. Alp kit seem really good actually. I mean, this is the only down sleeping bag I've ever owned, but because it's down compared to my other synthetic sleeping bag, this is amazing. It just keeps me so toasty warm in the night. When you take it out of this, this compression sack, because it's got feathers inside, it kind of just expands and becomes really, really puffy and big, but also it compresses down to a really small size. So it's just brilliant, so, so good. The only problem with these kind of down filled sleeping bags is they're much harder to wash. Like, I have to send this off to get it washed. But it's a really, really good sleeping bag. It's an Alp Kit Sky High 900, I think. All right, next is my silk sleeping bag liner. This is made by Rab. I used to have another one that I actually preferred to this one. It was really good because it had a hood. 
This one doesn't have a hood, which is really annoying because it lines my sleeping bag. It protects my sleeping bag from getting too dirty. Probably helps me stay a little bit warmer as well, potentially. But the main purpose of this is definitely for hygiene. All right, next in here at the bottom, I have my PJs, just my, my pajamas, just normal pajamas. So yeah, always have those at the bottom. And then I don't always carry these in here, but they do fit. This is my proper saw. This is a Baco Laplander folding saw and it's brilliant. You've probably seen me use it. I did recently break it, don't know if you can see, the end is snapped off. I feel a little bit sad about that, but still works perfectly well. And it's a yeah, really, really good bit of gear. I like it. And then this is my bushcraft knife. It is a Highlander uh, something or other. This is the knife that I use to split logs. Yeah, just basically do, do jobs that require a bit more of a kind of rugged knife and the blade you can see goes all the way back into the handle so you can really kind of like use and abuse it and uh, it takes quite a beating so yeah that's my bushcraft knife all right then what else so at the bottom of my bag here i've just got loads of spare paracord a lot of these come in have kind of short bundles of them like this and these are just really useful i often carry one of these in my pocket and that's what i used to like tie my bag up to a tree for example or like if the paracord that's attached to my tarp to peg it out. If that's not quite long enough, I can then attach this to the existing paracord and make that longer. And then these two are like, I guess they're spare ridge lines, really. Yeah, either if I have guests out and we bring the second tarp, or if mine breaks, or I don't know, I just find it's really useful having spare paracord. And it doesn't take up much room, so it's quite nice to, have, to know that I have spares. And then I have toothbrush, toothpaste, and floss, obviously just for brushing my teeth. And all right, and this is the last thing. Now, this is not very good actually, but because this is, you know, this is the bag I need to go out to the forest for one night, this is kind of my first aid kit. <laughs> yeah, it's basically a big strip of fabric plaster because, yeah, obviously, if I ever cut myself with my knife or with my saw, those cuts can be quite deep. And so sometimes you just need a plaster. Sometimes you need more of a bandage, and so this can kind of be both. You know, if I had a really big cut, what I'd probably do is just use this as a bandage. Yeah, I don't, I don't worry too much about having like a full first aid kit in this bag because I'm only ever using it for a few hours at a time, if that makes sense. So I either have my bike, which has a first aid kit in it, and I've also got a first aid kit in my car, which is almost always nearby. The main thing that happens in the forest, injury-wise, is is normally with a saw or with a knife, especially when it's dark, like I'm sawing, I'm sawing, I'm sawing, and I'm tired, and then it slips out and I saw my hand. You know, that's happened a few times. But yeah, just a couple of times I've sliced into my hand and uh, it's obviously, obviously bleeds quite a lot. And so having, you know, a roll of plaster is just really, really useful. I probably should have more in terms of first aid, but this and my tick tweezers is kind of, those are the things that seem to be most important really. And yeah, that is everything in my bag. So there we are. I'm just gonna pack it all away now. Yeah, there it is. Oh, there's one last thing actually I didn't show you. And it's this, this is my compass. Sometimes it's just really useful to have because I know that I've parked on a road that's like north of the wood. And so if I don't have my phone or my phone's run out of battery, I can just look at the compass and say, all right, well, that's north. So let's head that way. And it's just really good. Yeah, just a useful little addition. It's kind of cool. So uh, yeah, hope that was interesting and I will see you next time.